Did you know that the average cost to make a website in my town is almost $65? That's huge, especially if you're the one paying for it, and it might be nothing compared to what it is in your town. Hey guys, I'm Greg, and in this video I'm going to show you how to save a ton of money when you make a WordPress website by doing it yourself. You could make a website like May, who says, thanks so much Greg, you saved me after I passed through quite a bit of grief not finding the way that would actually work. Or you could do it like the Brianna who said, Greg, you rock, your tutorial was amazing. You rock too, the Brianna, I'm gonna go by the Greg from now on. But you're probably wondering by now what we're even gonna make today. The website we're gonna make today is called www.wpsitefree.com. And now we can go ahead and just get started with a little website tour. All right, so go ahead and grab yourself a cup of coffee, tea, ice water, juice, soda, whatever it is you like to drink. I got my drink and I'm gonna hop over to my computer now and bust out the website and we're gonna go ahead and learn how to create a WordPress website for free. All right, so I'll see you on the inside. Bless you, Leroy. All right, come on over, let's do it. No, I'm on my computer, you gotta open up yours. All right, I'll see you over there. Bye for now. So here's the website we're gonna learn how to set up together today. So for starters, you learn how to make a site title up here and you learn how to get the social media icons to wherever you go. You're gonna learn how to make a menu here, which is the standard feature of any WordPress site, and make a search bar. And then you're gonna learn how to set up an image slider with these nice arrows. You can put in as many image gallery slides as you want. We just have two, and this nice overlay text that can explain what we're talking about on the image slider. You're gonna learn how to make this call to action area with a button. Really cool, you can get people excited about your products or take them anywhere on your website or anywhere on the web with that button. Then you get the blog post on the homepage, this really cool three column layout, great for newspaper style blogs or magazine blogs like the Huffington Post. We're gonna learn how to make this Facebook like box as you can see, you're gonna get archives, you can put anything in your sidebar by the way, like ads or subscription forms or just text, images, more sliders, whatever you want. If we go up, we can click on a page. For example, we're gonna learn how to set up an about page and a contact page. The about page is really cool, just has some text and an image. And the contact page is really cool, just has some text and a contact form, which works. It goes to your email that you choose that you put in WordPress and another piece of text and then a video. You're gonna learn how to insert a video from YouTube, Vimeo, wherever you like to watch your videos. We can test out the contact form if you want. Hey. What's the cost? When someone clicks send, WordPress will think for a second and then it'll say a message has been sent. So there's the message, uh, pretty cool, so that works. By the way, you can make this whole website without any code or technology required, but throughout the tutorial, I will teach you a little bit about CSS and HTML, just so you can say you know code and be confident making some advanced edits. Oh, last but not least, this website is mobile friendly, responsive. If you drag it inwards, you can see my editing window in the background. Don't look at that. Just look at the website responding, that's why it's called responsive, to a different size screen. So this would simulate a mobile phone. So pretty cool, every website has to be responsive nowadays, otherwise Google is gonna hate on you. So I hope these are some web design skills that you'd be interested in learning today. When you leave here, you will walk away with this exact complete website, except for it'll have your own images in it. And next, we're gonna hop over to my desktop. We're gonna open up a little notepad that has the steps we need to make this website and to make it for free. All right, so let's head over there, and then after that, we'll start a build-in. Let's do it. So we have three examples here we're gonna see of how to make a website. We're gonna look at them really quickly. And then the third one is what we're going to be doing today. So the first example is just WordPress.com. You've probably heard of WordPress.com. To get set up, you can just visit their WordPress.com website. You fill out this quick questionnaire, click continue. If you choose the free options, hopefully you get to this page where you can stick with the free blog, best for students, I guess. And then you can just go ahead and set up a site that will look something like this. There's a slight problem though, which is that if you wanna get rid of the .wordpress part in your domain name right here, you're gonna to have to pay wordpress.com $18 for that domain name. And if you do decide to do wordpress.com, I see a lot of people end up upgrading from the free version to go with parts of the personal version or even the premium version. And the average person I talk to at wordpress.com actually pays somewhere in the realm of $100 a year for their site, which is crazy. 
The second way of making a website is the traditional way where you go out in your town and you hire a web developer for some amount of money. So if you do that, you're gonna do the basics, which are a domain name and hosting, and then usually they'll install WordPress onto your domain name and hosting, which is the .org version, and they'll charge somewhere like $500 for that. Or maybe they'll give you a discount at, let's say, um, 200. Once they do the basics for you, you're gonna pay for the content, which is by far the most expensive part of a website where they put up all of your images and videos and make the website come to life. And that cost is usually about $2,000. Now, you might get a discount and you might get like $1,000, but it's still up there. So you end up paying a bill of about $1,200. Now comes the way that we're gonna do it here, number three. And we'll call number three a free YouTube video tutorial or whatever so well, the way we're going to do part a is you're actually going to get the basics for face value so that means you're going to get a domain name and hosting for exactly what they cost there's not going to be an upcharge for someone to set them up for you and you're actually going to learn how to set them up on your own for future projects if you want to take on clients or something which i think is truly priceless those numbers are going to be a domain name cost of $15 per year. I don't know why I'm doing parentheses, it just makes it look prettier. And then hosting is gonna be $10 per month. So the cost of those two nominal items that we need today to get started is obviously 15 plus 10, which is $25. Now for part B, the content. That's all gonna be free. So we're gonna use WordPress org which is in fact free to install once you have the domain name and hosting I'm going to show you how to do that without any coding or tech knowledge whatsoever so you don't have to go pay for that coding class down the road although it's actually a pretty good idea to take some sort of coding class I did and it changed my life and then we're gonna learn how to get a free WordPress theme which is awesome we're gonna use plugins on our site which are also free and then all the stuff like images blog posts um, you know logo, blah, blah, is all free. So whew, that's a lot of freeze. Plus I'm gonna show you a coupon which is gonna cut the cost of those basics that most of us always pay, which is called Big Bonus. That's the coupon itself. And that's gonna get our domain name down to $6 and the hosting also down to about $6. So that number just becomes 12 and it's going to take about 50 percent off of what this would cost people so if that all makes sense to you and you're ready to make a wordpress website essentially for free then we're free to do it you're freed in the future to make more websites you're probably sitting here watching youtube because you got some free time on your hands and i don't want to take up too much of it so let's go ahead and move forward and let's get those basics taken care of quickly and easily and then we can move on to the fun stuff which is going to be creating our website and all the content for free so to do it, the next step is just to open up your web browsers and I like starting at Google right here and just type in hostgator.com. That's H-O-S-T-G-A-T-O-R, like the alligator.com and hit enter. All right, so Hostgator is the web host I've been using forever pretty much since I started on wordpress.org. I really like them because they offer all these different kinds of hosting. If you ever want to upgrade, um, even though I've stayed with my like original plan for uh, so long now, because it works great. Um, they're always creating new features and yeah, they just help you get started really quickly and easily on your website. Whether you're a personal user, business owner, or a website pro, any of them. Um, but we could talk about HostGator for a while. I just want you to know that I've tried like a bunch of other web hosts for clients and when I jump on board with a different project or become like a website manager or something. And so I've definitely tried like Greenhost and you know B2 Hosting and all these other ones like um, Mobile Ground. And those aren't real names, but I just wanted to tell you that when I've tried a lot of other hosts, I start feeling like they're confusing and laid out weird and they look really pretty up front but then they're hard to use in the back end because they don't put enough money and time into their infrastructure whereas at hostgator i know it's always really easy to use there's only a few buttons you have to click to get to wordpress and it's just laid out really simply like almost the google of web hosting um, hostgator's prices are also really good as you can see and i've definitely seen web hosts that have convinced people who don't know what they're doing to pay 20 30 40 even 100 dollars a month 
but really with web hosting, you just want a plan that's under $10 a month, or you want a plan that's like $100 a month if you're gonna build like the next Amazon or some big website like Twitter or something. It's kind of one or the other. And so for our cases right now, we're gonna go with the cheapest option, which is gonna be the under $10. You might think you need WordPress hosting, but you don't. That's just a more fancy upgraded package. Um, the cheapest possible option to install WordPress and get going is obviously what we want, and that's web hosting right here. So click on that. All right, so now you're on the three bucket screen that all of us see, and obviously the cheapest one is the Hatchling on the far left for $275 a month. So that's what we want, but what's the difference? Well, the Hatchling has all these really great features like a one-click WordPress install on meter bandwidth, free SSL certificate, blah, blah, blah. And the baby plan has everything the hatchling plan, except for you can do unlimited domains. What does that mean? Well, that means you can host WordPress sites for multiple domains. So you would just need to purchase an additional domain like your second website.com or you know, your best friend's website company.com. And once you buy it, which you can do through HostGator, you can host it on your hosting plan here. So it's like you buy a plot of land for one house or you can buy a bigger plot of land that allows for like tons of houses. And then the business plan has everything that the baby plan does except for more tools for businesses. If you have like a corporate account um, or a corporate budget, then maybe go with them. Some people like that, but I think right now the Hatchling and the baby plan are perfect for us. I personally started Hatchling, upgraded to baby and currently run baby. So for that very reason, I'm going to recommend you start with the Hatchling, but of course, totally up to you. All right. And also the WordPress installation is the same on all of these. So if you want to go with baby or business, then the installing WordPress process we'll do right after this is exactly the same. All right. So to move forward in the tutorial, the next thing you need to do is just click buy now and we're going to go with Hatchling. Okay. So here we are in the order form and the first thing is to choose a domain. So we have the option to register a new domain or say I already own this domain. And if you wanted to get a domain name from HostGator for six bucks, it's a really great deal. You could do that here. But in my case, I'm usually worried someone's going to take my domain name if I have an idea for it. I don't want it to get stolen. So I already registered us a domain name for this tutorial, which is nice and cute. It's just WP site free. So if you need any help picking your domain name, let me know. Um, you cannot put the word WordPress in your domain name. You have to do WP, otherwise it's a trademark violation. And uh, yeah, if you choose I already own this domain and you already bought a domain name, then after we get hosting, I'm gonna show you how to connect the two and you of course won't pay HostGator anything for this domain name. But like I said, if you need to register a new domain, go for it at HostGator. I've definitely gone that route before very happily. So now we're gonna come down to step two, which is choose a hosting plan. And we have Hatchling, that's great. I'm just gonna take our billing cycle and illustrate for you that the prices, oh, that thing popped down. All right, so we're just gonna keep one domain name checked. We're not gonna buy the other ones. All right, and we have in our choose a hosting plan section, there is clearly a price discount as we go longer for longer billing cycles. That means that you can get the hosting price down if you know you're gonna use it, like I've been a hosting customer for almost 10 years, so I should have chosen this one on day one, but I actually just went with a 12 month when I first signed up, because that seemed like a good enough deal. So just to walk you through the psychology of, you know, what to pick and how to save the most money in the long run, if you do a longer billing cycle, AKA term period, then you're gonna save more. Um, but I actually have a coupon that's gonna work on the one month and the three months and the six month and so on. So I'm gonna show you that in a second. And for today, I just wanna get one month just so we can try out WordPress and all the amazing features of HostGator and not get locked in. All right, I find that that's what a lot of people want. But again, totally up to you. And we're gonna reduce that price. So now we just need a username. So we can just pop in like whatever you wanna do. Um, it's pretty cool. And security pin. So just in case you get locked out of your account. Probably won't, but Make that something you'll remember. And we can come down to enter your billing info. So just pop it in there like you would for any purchase on Amazon or Apple or wherever you do your online shopping. All right, then you can choose your payment type. They offer a credit card or PayPal. So whatever works best for you, wherever you are, I just like doing credit cards so I can get those points. 
So we're done with step three and we can scroll down to step four, add additional services. And what we actually want to do here is just unadd the additional services because we want to keep this free of extra charges. And you might see at the top that HostGator now offers the free SSL certificate. So that's pretty cool. You used to have to pay for that per month. And now they've decided to be really awesome and give it to us for free so that people will trust your site and be more likely to buy from you. Very cool, now we can scroll down and come to step five, which is really important. I always like this step because we get to enter a coupon code and we get to see the price of our hosting go down. So they've started us off with the, this coupon right here. You might see something different depending on when you sign up. But what we wanna do to get the biggest discount is just delete that and write in big bonus like that. And it's not case sensitive, but I just like writing it like that. And then we can click validate. So we saw the price go down and it's gonna cut the price in half, all right, which is really nice. So that gives you a discount and it applies to however long you register hosting for. If you go with the 12 months, it'll take half off the 12 month total, 36 months, it gets even bigger. So again, up to you um, and definitely enjoy those savings in your pocket. And if you were buying a domain name now too, that should reduce the price of the domain name as well, like we mentioned. All right, so that is my coupon. If you use that coupon code big bonus, I will get a small credit from HostGator just for mentioning them to you and for sending you their way. So I really appreciate that. Um, that's how I keep my videos free and how I make my humble little living over here on YouTube. Um, so thanks a ton. I really appreciate it if you use my coupon code and save the largest amount possible today. All right, so in step six, we just need to review your order details. You get the 24-7, 365 phone, live chat, email support for free, instant account activation for free, so your host gear account will be ready right away, money back guarantee, 45 days if you change your mind, and the hatchling plan for however many months you want, and that's gonna be discounted, and you see the number right here of what we pay, and then this is what we would have paid without the coupon. Then we see the discount that the coupon takes off, give us that extra penny right there too, which is nice. And then we see the amount due, which is what we'll pay. So I like to think of this as free, you know, economically speaking, if you paid a web developer, you'd pay them like 500 bucks. So technically we're gonna be up like $495 here going this route instead of going with the web developer. So that's pretty cool. It's almost better than free. And you learn those priceless skills of doing it yourself, which is always a good choice in my opinion. So with that all said, the only thing we need to do is just check this box right here. And now we can move forward and the next step, we're gonna install WordPress. So all we need to do is just click check out now. All right, let's do it. Very nice, good job. So you now should have your hosting and your domain name all registered and ready to go. And after you see that welcome to the HostGator family screen, you'll be in the HostGator customer portal. If you get logged out for whatever reason, the link to log back into your customer portal is just portal.hostgator.com and they'll email you your username and password. So the next step we can do is just to install WordPress now that our domain and our hosting are all live. And to install WordPress, we just need to click on the hosting tab. On this screen, you'll see a variety of nice tools and icons, which I could explain to you, but I really don't use that many of these tools. The main ones I use are Quick Install, where we install WordPress, and File Manager, which is an FTP way of doing things. And that's just file transfer protocol, like uploading stuff manually to the website. Anyways, for now, all we need to do to proceed is just do the Launch Quick Install button. Or you can do Get Started with WordPress today. They're the same thing. I just like going with Quick Install because it's been around since the beginning of time. So let's click Launch Quick Install. Next, you can choose the HostGator website builder, which is awesome and a lot of fun, or you can choose one-click installs to install other softwares like Joomla, Magento, etc. But of course, we wanna click WordPress free, so let's do it. Next, you just need to select your domain for installation. So it'll show us just the latest version of WordPress up top, and this will always update automatically because HostGator keeps things very fresh and up-to-date. And we just need to move forward and choose our domain. So we can click on the drop down and we can find our domain name. All right, there she is. And then just leave this directory box blank and let's click next. And we're not gonna let a pro do it for us. We're not gonna fall for any of that. We're gonna do it for free by clicking next. Now we just need a blog title. So we can just call it, whatever the domain name is, is a good first choice. 
and then user just go with first name and an email that works where WordPress will email you the installation details like your login link and password and username. Now we'll just check this box to agree to the terms of service and keep in mind that you can't change your admin user. That's what your WordPress blog or website will say this post is by, whatever this is. So you probably don't want to put in your AIM username. You probably want to make it a little more professional, uh, whatever you want all of your content to be managed under pick that name. All right, looking good. Now we can just click install and WordPress will be put onto our hosting and our domain name by the HostGator quick install marketplace. All right, so let's do it. So it's gonna think for a while. All right, there's Snappy, little alligator. And installation complete, so that worked out great. If it says installation failed, I have a video for you on that to, to fix it, just post a comment and I'll send you that video. But it should work great and you should be done installing WordPress when it says installation complete with the green check mark. Great job. Now what a lot of people like doing I've found is you wanna click on login and that'll log you into your WordPress site. The problem is if you just did this, the site might not be ready. Your files might be still settling into place. So a good idea right now is to connect our domain name to our hosting. And it might already be connected, but we should at least check on this so that you know how that connection works. So there are two options here pretty much. Um, the first option is if you bought your domain name at HostGator, you just go back to the portal, the customer portal and click domains. All right, and then you're gonna see the domain you registered here. So these are just different ones that I bought from HostGator a while ago. And what you do is just click on the gear and then you want to make sure that your correct name servers are in right here. So how do you know your correct name servers? Well, HostGator will email you them. So we can see an example of what name servers look like here in my Gmail. It's just going to be in an email from HostGator.com, your account info sales or something like that. That'll get sent to you right when you uh, sign up with HostGator, right when you see that welcome to the family screen. And then you're going to get first name server and second name server. And these will always be how your hosting account is identified. So wherever you buy domain names, that place, that domain name place needs to have these two pieces of information in there so that your domain names show what's on your hosting account. It'll make a little more sense to you as you hear more and more about name servers or maybe you feel like Googling it or something. But for now, all you need to know is that your first name server and your second name server need to be entered in here at HostGator where it says name servers if you registered your domain name at HostGator. So you just click change, write them in, and then click save my name servers. All right, and then everything will start working. If you got your domain name at somewhere like GoDaddy, or maybe you picked a different registrar, I'll show you the process now. You're just gonna go to your GoDaddy and click on your name, click manage domains. Now you're gonna find the domain name we're working with. So you can see I've gone a little bit crazy here. I have totally lost track of where all these domain names go, but here's the one we want. And so that's cool, here it is, and then we just need to click Manage DNS to do this step. And then here's name servers, all right, so I already did this. So it says using custom name servers, but in your case it might say like dot .domain control or something, so you just click change. And then you change it from default to custom, and then you enter in HostGator first name server and HostGator second name server exactly as they appear in the your account email with the dot and then the second dot, and then you click save. And you do absolutely need to do this step, or at least make sure that this is entered in here correctly so that your domain name connects to your hosting. In other words, so that people see the right thing and you see the right thing when your domain name is visited. Okay, so I already did that so that we can just proceed and move onwards. The downside is that can take up to 72 hours to fully connect so that everyone sees your domain name. So that's why I wanted to get it out of the way soon. So then here we are back in our WordPress area and what we're gonna do now is just take a quick break. We're gonna give it 30 more minutes so that our WordPress site is ready and then we're gonna start creating our WordPress website. So I'm gonna take a break and go like wander around outside or something and I'll be back and we'll talk soon.
Okay guys, so my break is over and I'm back in Google here and I'm just going to check out our site and see what we made. Alright, that's pretty cool. So we see our domain name and you're going to see a page probably like this with the website coming soon page. It's just a default landing page that HostGator will set up for you so people don't see nothing. And you know, so they say if you can read this page it means your installation was successful. So we did it uh, well, but we don't want this page up because it just doesn't really match our brand. So let's log in and let's get to work and change that and change everything. So usually when I log into WordPress, I go to the .com or whatever yours is, like .org, put the cursor there and then, then do forward slash and then do WP dash like that. If I could type WP dash admin and then hit enter. And that'll take you to the default login screen that all the WordPress users have, like Time Magazine, Zoella, Katy Perry, Forbes, TechCrunch, all the people that use WordPress have this screen. But some people have said they didn't get the email from WordPress with their password and their username. So I'll show you another way to get that set up and change your password because if you didn't get that, you might also not get the lost your password email if you do it this way. So one way you can reset your password for sure is just go back to portal.hostgator.com and log in. And so then when you're here, just click hosting. And then you can just come down and click launch quick install. This is where we did WordPress in the first place. And then you can just click my installs in the left over here. All right, and I like taking you back to the HostGator control panel because this is where a lot of the cool stuff goes on when you become a WordPress designer, a developer, when you get more involved with your website. So I'm just gonna command find our domain and it's at the very bottom. And then we can just click reset password and then select user, so that's uh, ourselves, and then we just make a new password right here. All right, and then just click update, password updated, and then we can head back to WordPress and we can just do the username, so that's ourselves, and then the password, and then click remember me so we don't have to type it in again, hopefully, and then log in. All right, so that is a surefire way to get into WordPress, and also now you visited your control panel again and you know a little bit more about it. All right, so welcome to WordPress. And what we like doing in all of our videos is a little housekeeping now to make you familiar with all the different tabs over here, or at least the most important ones at first. I don't spend a lot of time in all these, but you know things like posts, media, pages, plugins, really good to be familiar with. And then we can also sort of arrange your dashboard here so it looks like you want it to look and it doesn't just look like gibberish. If you want to skip housekeeping, that's totally fine. Just hop down to those quick links in the notes below the video and proceed as you wish. All right, so let's do it. We're going to close a bunch of stuff to start with. All right, just get rid of this stuff. Just keep it real nice and simple. And then I like to start usually with welcome to WordPress. So it says that every time you log in. All right, and then we're also gonna close Jetpack because Jetpack is if we have a WordPress.com site, maybe you did our migration video, WordPress.com to WordPress.org migration, and you wanna use Jetpack so you can do the features and the tools you had on your old blog on your new blog. We don't have that. And then, all right, so Gutenberg's coming soon. We don't really know much about that yet, but I'm sure we'll talk about it. And then, so we're just gonna get our site looking like this and you can drag the uh, stuff around if you want to see your activity. So I don't really use a lot of these tools, but you know, now you know about them, maybe you'll want to later. All right, so that does it for the rearranging, and now we can just go to your site is displaying a coming soon page. That's that page with the green links we saw that's not this, but it's what someone would see if they're not logged in, the coming soon page, all right? We're logged in though, so we see our actual blog. But what we wanna do is just get rid of that coming soon page, and we can do that by clicking here. All right, great, so now the whole world will see our blog as we see it, and there's no confusion if you ask your friend to check out your site and they see something different. All right, now we can come back to the dashboard and we can click on posts. All right, and in posts, we just have a default blog post, which is called Hello World just shows some basic features of a blog post if you click into it. So some people like like rewriting this post or editing over it because it's already made for them. But in our case, we're going to make our own posts 
super simple. It's kind of the essence of WordPress. So we want to start fresh and we can just trash this one. All right, next we can click pages and do the same thing. So we have a sample page and we're just going to trash it. And we will make all of our own pages. You can have unlimited. Now we're going to click media and we're going to see that this is where you would have images in WordPress, but no media files are found. But this is where you will upload pictures and PDFs and interesting files like that that WordPress allows. All right, now we're going to come down to plugins and we're going to see what's going on there. What do you have in plugins? So by default, your WordPress will come with some plugins, probably, and it might look like this or sort of like this. So what we want to do is deactivate and delete the plugins we're not going to use because they take up space and they slow down your site, which is bad. And we want to install the plugins that we do want to use. And we're only going to use a few that work great and I've tested them day in and day out. All right, so let's start at the top and let's make sure that our plugins libraries look the same so that we can move forward. And as we build, we can hopefully get the same end result without anything going wrong. So at the top, if you have Akismet anti-spam, we're going to keep that. Don't touch it. It's really useful for trapping spam comments that malicious websites uh, send over. It just stops them and then you can delete them or it like auto deletes them. So that's pretty cool. Next, we have Google Analytics for WordPress by Monster Insights. And I actually like doing this manually. All right, so I'll show you how to set up Google Analytics for free manually without a plugin. If you can do it without a plugin, generally you should because again, they slow it on your site. So we'll deactivate it. And then we're just gonna submit. Moving down, we'll keep uh, Hello Dolly deactivated. We're gonna deactivate Jetpack because we don't have anything from WordPress.com to use. We're gonna deactivate Mojo. Nothing against these plugins. They're all high quality and built by really awesome people, but we just don't need them at the moment. So we'll deactivate OptinMonster and we'll deactivate WP Forms. So. All right, now we should just have one plugin and we're gonna delete the other ones. You can just click delete, enter, delete, enter. And one common question I get a lot is if you delete a plugin, will it break your site and will you ever be able to use it again? The answer is no, it won't break your site as long as you're not using it for something important, um, which in this case, we're not using these plugins for anything. And the other answer is yes, you can always get it back for free. You can do so by clicking add new up here and then you just search for it. So speaking of add new, let's click that now. Let's go through the few plugins that we love. The first plugin that I want us to get is just called headers and footers. Click enter. And it's actually called insert headers and footers. So this one's really good for plugging in code from Facebook or Google Analytics. And that lets you do stuff like have a Facebook like box and stuff. So really good, really lightweight by the nice folks at WP Beginner. So we're gonna install it and activate it. And one thing you like uh, should look for with plugins is the number of active installations. So that one had 500,000, a lot of people trust it. What plugins are, are basically just little packets of hard work and code and blood, sweat and tears that developers have made for WordPress. And then within this WordPress ecosystem, you can find out which ones work better or work worse. But by default, WordPress doesn't know that you want to do all this stuff. So that's why people make plugins to let us do more with our website. OK, so let's click Add New again. And we are going to get a cool plugin called TF Social Share, which lets us easily put social buttons above and below our posts. And that's this one here by Kunal Shikhar. I've been using this one for years. Really good, really just simple plugin. So let's click Install Now and Activate. And then we're going to click Add New again. And we're going to grab the plugin called um, Contact Form 7, which is probably the most used uh, way of putting a contact form on your site. So you don't need to put up your email, but people can still reach you. Install now and activate. And then Add New one more time. And we're going to grab the Yoast SEO plugin, which is really fun. It lets you get a SEO checklist beneath your blog post, which we'll use. So I'll just search Yoast. And then with that checklist, you can make sure that you have the right words and the right content structure in there so that your blog posts have a better chance at ranking in Google. Super fun. Install now and it's free. There's a premium version, but we can do so much with the free version. So we're going to do the free version for now and activate. 
And so right away, Yoast says we have some SEO issues. We're not going to look at them right now, but once we write our blog post for the homepage, then we're going to look at how to make it all SEO friendly. Okay, we're done with plugins. That sounds really good. We might think of one or two more as we move on. Um, you know, just add it in there. You can always do that. But for now, these five plugins are a really ideal start for your new website. So we can now move on and click on Appearance. And we're going to go to the Themes area. So when you click Appearance or when you click Themes, it's the same thing. It just takes us to our Themes library, denoted by the word Themes up here. You'll have some default themes and you can see the one that's active which has the black bar beneath it and then the other ones that this comes with so active is 2017 WordPress doesn't seem to have made the 2018 theme yet although we could probably expect it at some point they work really hard on them so I'm sure they're just making it amazing and then we have 2015 and we have 2016 alright so some free looks if you want to delete a theme you can just click it to open it the lower right there's the delete button just delete it and click OK if you want to keep this super clean here, don't blame me. So let's look at how our theme looks. We can click to our site by clicking in the upper left corner where it's the little home icon and it says your site name. And this will sort of just flip it around so that you're looking at your website. And this is of course how the whole world sees it. The whole world won't see this black bar at the top unless someone's logged in. And then if you click on your site title again in the upper left, it just goes back to the dashboard. And also, if you hovered on it and you click Dashboard, it'll just take you to the dashboard, of course. So that's how our site looks. It's a really nice look. Um, it has that parallax feature on the image I like. But the problem is, a lot of other sites look like this. You could imagine how many WordPress sites are installed every day, and almost all of them come with this look. So while it's good, we want our site to be not just good, but amazing, and more importantly, totally unique. And that's why we're going to install a new theme I've picked out for us right now. So let's check it out. To install a new theme, we can just go back to the dashboard. Just click there in the upper left, and now we can click on Appearance. Alright, and now we can just click Add New up here, or you can click Add New over here, same thing. And I want to introduce you guys to one of my favorite WordPress theme creators of all time called Catch Themes. Catch, like you'd catch a baseball when someone tossed it to you. And so we use one of Catch's themes in our most popular video from 2017, our GoDaddy website tutorial. So we're going to use it again today. They've updated it a lot, and I think it's a great place for you to start and maybe stick with for a while if you like it. All right, so we're going to check that out. Of course, you could just scroll down this list and grab one of these other WordPress themes, like the popular ones or the latest ones. Or you could just search for something like, you know, real estate and you can find themes that are all about real estate or whatever your keyword is and have a lot of fun. The problem is I haven't tested all these themes, um, but as you get more familiar with WordPress, you can definitely make a website with virtually any theme you can find, although you know some might work better than others. So let's grab this theme I wanna show you and it's called Catch Base. And click Enter and there is Catch Base. Super cool, it has the social media buttons in the upper right, it has the image slider, love it. And basically any theme you find on the web that's free, if you find it through Google and you want to download it, you could actually just grab it right here within WordPress and save that step of downloading it to your computer and save that space. So if it's a free theme, there's a good chance that WordPress has it right here in their library. And also you might notice that Catch has created all these other themes too. They're all relatively popular, so you know they're doing something right. All right, so enough said, let's install Catchbase and let's go ahead and build a website. And of course, this theme is free, all right, which we love, and we'll activate it. All right, very good. And now we're just gonna click Visit Site right here and we're gonna see how we change the site. Pretty cool. So right away, our site has some content. This is just a demo slider. And you get this nice call to action area with a button. We didn't have to do any work for that, all for free. You get this nice featured content area for free. And then this error just comes because we don't have any blog posts. But we have this really cool layout that feels like a magazine or a newspaper. And I find this works really well with content-based websites where you write or your guest authors write. And it's just a good structure with the boxes, the images, and the different sort of columns. So let's get to work and let's make this website totally ours. 
So before we start designing and building, let's open up our free website guide here and we've zoomed ahead and we're now done with all of the basics. Got all that squared away and we got the content up and running with WordPress, the theme, the plugins, and all the way up to this point right here. So it's pretty cool. You now have your own website. You can do pretty much anything you want on it. And the first thing I want to do, as promised, is just help you out with a logo. We're going to make a free logo and put it on the site in the upper left of the header. So to make a logo, you can just go to logo maker without the e dot com. And that's just one place to make logos. I like them because they're really fast and free and they have a uh, icon search. So you can search for like a compass is a really good one I like. And then you can find compasses, or you could also click on like multicolor, silly, abstract, all sorts of different creatures, shapes, and designs. So I really like this leaf right here. I think it's a leaf because it shows that we're growing our website, and it's also got the cyclical arrows, which shows how. WordPress is a give and get community, so it's like give, get, give, get. I don't know. You can make up a cool story for your own logo. So once you click it, it's just going to appear in our canvas, and you can drag to resize. And so we usually want a size of around 100 to 200 pixels. So we're going to size it down a little on the website, but we want it to be a little bigger to start with. Maybe like around 175. Perfect. If you want to add text next to it, just click on the T, and then you can just start writing like logo text and then you can just click off of it and then click to grab and drag it you'll get the nice little alignment sticks you can make it bigger overlap whatever you want to do you can also change any colors just with the color wheel here on the upper right just click around wherever you're highlighted it will change the color of that object so pretty cool but we're actually going to use the text from the WordPress site itself we just want the leaf so I'm just going to click crop now in the lower right to get rid of the white space and then click enter. All right, and then we have the perfect size for our logo. We just need to click the floppy disk in the upper right now to save logo. It's gonna ask us if we want the high resolution file and maybe you do later, but for now we wanna keep it free. So we're gonna say no thanks. I'm just gonna name it, leave logo version one and click save. Then you just need to jump back over to Logo Maker, and if it asks you to give credit, we have to make sure to do that. So it says credit is required, just follow this guide. So I'm just going to click that link. So we are a website, and we just have to remember to create a page called Credits, and then right in that page, create my free logo at logomaker.com and give them a link. So we'll make sure to do that later. Let's go back to our WordPress site and let's put that logo up now. So to insert our logo, we just need to click on the customize button for the first time. All right, and now we can click site identity and under logo, there's no logo, so let's put one there. Just click select logo, click upload files, click select files, and now we're gonna double click on the leaf logo version one. All right, and there we have it. We just need to click select. And we're gonna skip cropping to keep the full size logo. It's probably gonna be really big at first. Even though it's not that big in reality, it's only like 200 pixels, but it just wants to be really big. So the easiest way to size it down is just to go back and then click on additional CSS. And I'm gonna show you how to write your, perhaps your first little snippet so on line one over here in the lower left, just write a pound sign and then write site, S-I-T-E dash logo. Then make an open alligator bracket and it's gonna give you the closed one too. So just hit enter to keep them both kind of in position. And then just write max, M-A-X dash width. You can see it's trying to help us, colon. And then we're gonna go for like 10% semicolon. And we can see that that CSS communicates with the logo because we gave it the site logo selector and that means this thing is the site logo. I just know that because I already looked at how the code is written behind the site. And then we have the max width command and it's 10%. And you can even change that 
to something that lines up perfectly with your text like seven or eight percent very good so just like that you now know css okay so let's just publish and make it go live very cool and now we can x out of customize and see what we made all right so we have a pretty cool logo i think the green looks good it doesn't clash you know we have a lot of blues but there's no reason we can't have some greens too and the last thing I want to do to our logo is just change up the text and the little text. So let's go back to customize. Let's see how to do that. If you click on site identity, you're going to get this screen again where we could have done it before, but we kind of wanted to just see how it looked. So we can just change WP site free to WP site free .com, whatever you want to say. And then just another WordPress site. We definitely want to get rid of that because every WordPress site says that. All right, that should do it and publish and we're done with the logo. All right, and we can X out of here. All right, so moving top to bottom, I want to show you now how to set up our menu right here in this little gray bar. And after that, the image slider. And to do both of those, we actually need to make a couple pages because the pages contain the content which goes in the menu and which goes in the slider. And then you'll just know in general how to create pages in WordPress and on the internet, which is pretty much the most basic thing ever. So good know-how. So to get started creating all these three things, the menu, the slider, and the pages, just come to the top navigation, the little slim bar, and under new, hover on new, and click page. All right, beautiful. So we're just gonna give this a title, which is about, and you call it about us, or about me, or whatever you wanna write. And what we have below is just the basic Microsoft Word-esque editor for a new post or a new page. We have all the basic tools, like how to make bigger text, how to make bold, italics, lists, quotes, alignment. And if you toggle the toolbar, you get even more tools like text color. Now we won't go through the entire page editor now because we don't really need to cover every single one of these buttons. But if you do want a tutorial on that, I can send you a link to a video. For now, what we really need is some text to fill out the page just to show you what text looks like. I'm gonna go to one of my favorite sites, which is Pan Ipsum, and just click on the Pan Ipsum link. And now we can choose any sort of text you want about all these subjects. So of course I want coffee. Or you can do two subjects at once and then click generate Ipsum. Very cool. Now all we need to do is just grab some text like such, right click, copy, come back to the site and we can just paste it in. All right, cool. If you want to add an image on your page, that's really easy too. just make some space, click add media. And now we obviously need more images than just our logo. So now would be a good time to grab those free images that are sitting right beneath the YouTube video. So if you open up the video, or well, you're obviously already on the video. If you open up the section beneath the video that says show more, you're going to see a link that says something like free images download and just click on that little short link. If you want to use our free website images and then click save. Very cool. Now we can just go back to WordPress and we can actually just be in the add media area here we just want to go to upload so now it's going to let us find any image that's on your home computer you just have to hit select files and then there's our website images folder we forgot to unzip it though sorry about that we actually have to find it it'll probably be in your downloads but you just have to find it and then double click it and that'll open it perfect now it's a folder so now WordPress understands that and we can open it up and we can highlight all these images and click open and they will one by one be uploaded to our WordPress and to our hosting and then we can use them anywhere we want. Well, not anywhere we want, but on our website. All right, so I'm just gonna pick an image randomly. I'm just gonna go with this surfer right here and I just need to unselect all the other images by clicking on them two times. Click to select it and click to unselect it and unselect it. All right, and now we have the check mark on our surfer, so it's selected. We can just change the size, and I usually like going with full size because that's the highest quality. And then we can click insert into page. And what WordPress will understand is to make the image go the full width of your page. So we can see it spans all the way from left to right. But what you can also do is kind of neat. You can click on it and you'll get the white boxes and you can drag it if you want some more white space around it. You can also click on the image and change the alignment with these boxes. So you can make it go to the center or the right. And going left or right will get that text wrapped around it. 
or going no alignment, we'll just have it sit on top of the text. All right, very cool. So I'm just gonna make it go a little bit wider so it's all the way across the page. So the last thing our page needs is just a featured image. On the lower right, we can click set featured image and just choose that same image that's in the post and click set featured image. And this will actually go in the image slider. We'll see in a second. All right, so let's try publishing this page and let's see what happens. If we publish it, we can then click to the site. All right, and we can see we got the page right here, but the slider didn't change. And here's our cool page. All right, so that should be working. Now don't worry too much about like the secondary widget area here uh, or the default widgets over here. Uh, we're gonna change up all that and make it look good. So for now, we just have one page and we wanna set up another page. So to set up the second page, we can again go to new page or another way to do it is you can just click back to the dashboard and then you can just click pages. Not sure how this WP Forms page snuck in here. It must have been from that plugin we used to have installed. So we'll trash that. But on this screen, basically, you just see a list of all the pages you've created. So as you make more and more, this is a useful way of keeping everything organized. And you can come in here and change the titles or just click into them and edit them. So for now, we can just click Add New at the top. And it'll do the same thing as if we hovered on New and clicked Page. Same thing. All right, and this is going to be our contact page. And we're going to get some text again about the coffees, maybe a slightly different little block of text. All right. All right, that'd be a little too much text for the top. So I'll delete a little bit of it. And next, we need our contact form right here. So how do we insert our contact form? Well, we need to make use of that contact form 7 plugin we installed earlier. So I want you to leave this page as it is right here. And we're going to open our site in a new window. So we can grab some stuff from that plugin. So once you're on your site, click to the dashboard. Now click plugins. And under contact form seven, click settings. And you're going to see a pre-made short code. And that's what we want. Just click on the short code and it should highlight the whole thing and then copy it, including the brackets on either end. All right, and then just come back to the page and we're going to paste it in right here, but because it's a piece of short code, you need to click on the text tab. And then this is just a space. That's just like the code for a space. You can delete that if it's there and then just paste in your short code. All right. And we want to give it a space. Pretty cool. And if we click back to the visual, it should just look like it would look as a short code, but it's going to transform into an actual contact form. So that's a nice feature of Contact Form 7. I'm pretty sure that almost everyone who uses it just uses the default shortcode. Although you can create more advanced, really cool contact forms with different um, input features and stuff like that in them. So back in our contact page, let's finish it up. Now we're going to hit enter and give ourselves some more space and we're going to grab some more text content. So what I find works well in terms of the flow of a page or a post in WordPress is to have some text content and then images and then text and then videos. You don't want your content to just be all text. You obviously want to mix it up. All right, so we have some text and then we're going to put in a video. I'll show you how to put in a video. Pretty cool. So to put in a video, just go to YouTube or Vimeo, for example. And I'm just going to grab one of our videos here because it's quick and easy. And so we can just grab any one of them like this, how to start an email list for free option. Kind of goes with what we're doing here and it's a good next step for when you're done with the website. So to put in the video, just click share on YouTube and then you click embed and then you can click on the embed video code just once it'll highlight and then just right click copy, come back to WordPress, hop over to the text tab because we're going to use some code from YouTube, delete those spaces and just paste it in. And all right, we're having a little trouble with getting spaces in between everything. But if we hit enter, then it'll look perfect. All right. And now when we go back to visual, that should actually show up. That's pretty cool. All right, we're going to throw in a little more text just to finish off the page. All right. And it's pretty cool. Put that at the bottom. And then above the video, I'm just gonna write free to contact us. All right, looking good. Our contact us page just needs that featured image. So click set featured image. 
And I'm gonna randomly grab this image of the woman in the field. Pretty cool, and set featured image. And we can publish our contact page. Great job. Okay, so we now have two pages and you now know how to use the WordPress page editor. We're really cruising. Let's go back to our home page and we see that we have both pages up here. Very cool, the contact page has a form and our video. And this form is now working. It'll go to the email you have in WordPress. So whatever email that you gave it when we installed WordPress, the contact forms will go to that email. Hopefully your best email. So now that we have some pages, we can actually create a menu right here above the image slider with those pages. So let's do it. We can click back to our dashboard and then in dashboard, we're gonna wanna hover on appearance. Same place where we did themes, but instead now we're gonna click menus. Pretty cool. So to start, you just need to give it a menu name. So we can call it main menu and then click create menu. Next, just grab the pages you want to put in your menu by selecting them and clicking Add to Menu. You can also add a link to anything you want, like maybe you want a link to Google or Facebook or SoundCloud or Twitter right here, you can do that. Or in our case, we can just make a home link. So to do that, I'm just going to type in our domain name, which is www.wpsitefree.com. And for the link text, we'll write home and add to menu. And now we're gonna drag it to the top because that's where it always goes. And we can move those as well just by clicking and holding, dragging and dropping. To create a drop down menu, you can just indent one of those menu tabs. Just click it, hold it, and you can move it and you can see the little dotted gray line where it's gonna go. Now lastly, we need a menu location, otherwise the menu won't show up. So let's choose primary menu and save it. And let's see what we made. So now when we click to our site, We'll see we have our own menu, we have a home button, we have an about button, we have a contact button. Perfect. Now that we have two new pages, we can also set up our image slider using the featured images from those pages. So let's do it. Come up to customize at the top, all right, and then let's go all the way down to featured slider, and we can see that the slider is set to be the demo featured slider, but we want to change that. So it's got those demo images of New York City, and we don't like that. We wanna give it the featured page slider instead. Now that we have two new pages, we can also set up our image slider using the featured images from those pages. So let's do it. Come up to customize at the top. All right, and then let's go all the way down to featured slider. And we can see that the slider is set to be the demo featured slider, but we wanna change that. So it's got those demo images of New York City, and we don't like that. We wanna give it the featured page slider instead. All right, now the slider's gonna go away momentarily because you just need to choose the featured pages that will go in the slider. So for featured page one, I'm gonna say about, and featured page two, contact. And right away, it'll pull in those featured images, and they will replace the other images in the slider. Not bad at all. All right, very good. So let's go ahead and publish it and let's see what it looks like on the homepage. We're gonna X out. And if you think the slider is too big right now, you are correct. The slider shouldn't go down past, ideally more than two thirds of the screen. You want people to be able to see the bottom of it without scrolling down. To change that, we just need to go back to our dashboard and then you can click to the images that are in the slider by clicking media, okay. And then we just need to click on our first image, which is the guy surfing. And we need to change the dimensions of this image. So we can do that by clicking edit image. All right. So what I want to accomplish now is for us to set a two to one width to height ratio to both of these images. They are different sizes. Their pixel counts, which is the width and the height are different. But if we give them the same ratio, they should look like the same size image within our slider. To set up a new image ratio where it says aspect ratio, just put in a two and a one or whatever you wanna go with. And then holding shift, click on top of the image and drag and it will maintain that ratio. Keep holding shift and then drag until you've gotten the entire width of the image. And then you can unclick shift and just drag to get the right portion of the image. And then click in the upper left, which is the crop button up here. And then save. Perfect, now let's do that to our other image of the woman. Just click edit image. 
aspect ratio of 2 to 1. And we're going to hold shift and drag, hold shift and drag. Make sure we got the whole image in terms of width and then just select the right portion and click crop and click save. And I might have been wrong. The images might have been the same size to begin with. Perfect. Now let's X out and let's go to our site and we'll see if that changed. All right, so the images didn't change quite yet. We actually have to reinsert the featured images. So let's click about, edit page, remove featured image, set featured image. We're gonna grab our surfer now, which is skinnier and set featured image and update. And now you can just go back to pages, do the same thing, contact, remove featured image, set featured image, choose the woman, set featured image, and update. And now let's check out our site. And our slider looks much better. Great job. Now that change might happen automatically, or maybe you can clear the cache in your browser and the images will just become skinnier automatically but in our case that was the quickest way to do it just replacing the featured image all right guys so pretty exciting how our website is coming together and all the stuff we're learning i hope is sinking in um it's pretty awesome especially if you had no website when you came here um, but if anything doesn't make sense or if you have any questions or just want to drop me a random emoji then leave that in the youtube comments below please and i'll talk to you there so for now, we will just keep moving because we got a lot of momentum now. And we're gonna change up our featured headline area right here so that you can direct people to your products or your course or anywhere else you want them to go, like an ebook page with this button. All right, and it tells us where to edit it right here. It's super nice of catch themes. And it says that this is a premium responsive theme, which it really isn't, it's not premium because that means paid. It just feels like one because it's so awesome. So to change up this wordage right here, we can just follow the directions and we can go to customize. And in customize, we can click theme options. So in the olden days, theme options used to be separate from customize, but now they usually try to combine them if they can into one area so we can edit them a little bit easier, um, especially in free themes. So we just wanna click on promotional headline options and then right away we can see the text that's showing up and we can easily remove it. And I'm just going to make this say, get started with WordPress. And then beneath it, we're just going to say whatever you want, but have some text uh, in mind. A great website is your ticket to the online world. Now you can invite everyone to your show. And then for the headline button text, I'm just going to say, learn more and that will go to the video itself once this is all edited and done and live. All right, now we just wanna publish it and we can see it vanish for a second, but it should come back, should come back, should come back. All right, so we just needed to toggle this area from entire site to homepage, front page, and now we got it and we'll publish it. Next up, I wanna remove our featured content area. We just don't have enough blog posts for that yet, but soon, once you start writing and you start recruiting guest authors to create amazing content, content is king, then you can show off that content right here. I think that would be great. So let's go back and we're gonna click on back one more time, and then we're gonna click featured content, and we are gonna remove it from the demo to, well, we're gonna actually change it from homepage, front page to disabled. All right, and that'll just keep our homepage design nice and tight and simple. And publish. Next, we can add our first blog post to the website. And by default, your blog post will fill in right here in the center column. So it'll cover up this 404 error as well. All right, so to set up your first blog post, just click out of customize. All right, and now we can hover on the slim navigation at the top on new and just click post. And the first type of post I recommend everyone publish um, is just a welcome to the blog post. So we're gonna say welcome to the blog dash feel free to look around. Nice and inviting and in a welcome post you can explain what you're gonna write about, what people can expect and what they can get from your blog. 
kind of lay it all out for them. Okay, so there's what I've written for today. Not much, but gets the job done. And we can see I set up an area for subscribing here. So to get a free email list going and a free email subscription form that people can use to join your newsletter, I definitely recommend signing up with Aweber. And Aweber is just at aweber.com. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log into my account. And I'm gonna show you how to insert an email form so that people can subscribe to your blog. And you get a little behind the scenes tour also. So, all right, this is us. And I'm just gonna click sign up forms. And I'm gonna click create a sign up form. And just sign up form. And I'm just gonna make it super simple. We can make it a little wider if we want. I really like this light gray option, but we can also go with maybe something even different, you know, just a little more styling. I'm gonna see what's popular at Aweber right now. All right, and I'm also gonna click show more, try to find the perfect uh, email form template for our blog. So let's try the blog options. And after all that looking, I've just settled on this simple shadow box. We can simplify the form even more by removing the powered by, and you can remove this line if you want too, but I find having that little link gives people a little more confidence to subscribe. And then you can just click save form. All right, and go to step two. Just need to name our form, simple blog form, save it, go to step three, Click I'll install my form. Now all you do is just click once right here like we've done before with the short code except for this is a little bit longer code. But you just gotta copy it and come back to the post. Click text and we're just gonna delete that space and paste it in. And then you can see just how easy it is to have an email form in a blog post once we publish it and go live. And by the way, Aweber has a free trial you can do for 30 days and you can use all of the features in Aweber that I use every week to send out newsletters and email follow-ups. You get all of Aweber for free for 30 days and you can try out becoming an email marketer. So I definitely would check out our video on that as a next step once you're done here. They definitely help my whole business feel more professional right away and not to mention grow it um, on automation like overnight and when I'm not at the blog. Okay, so before we go live with our first blog post, we need to add a new category. So let's just call this one nature and click add new category and also call it welcome and add new category. Perfect, and then we just need to add that featured image down below. Click set featured image. And we're gonna opt for something hopefully really striking. We have a few good ones here, but it's hard to deny that the dog is the coolest one. He's just loving it in the outdoors, so I think that's gonna be a good one for our homepage. And we'll click Set Featured Image. And now we can just publish. Let's see what we made. So if we go to our homepage, click in the upper left, we should hopefully see that blog post filled in. Bravo, all right, you're not gonna see the whole blog post, it's gonna give us this little read more snippet. Click on that and then we can open up the full post. We have our Aweber form, so people can use that right now, that works. And the text, and that's pretty cool. The only thing I don't love about our post is there's no featured image at the top. Nowadays a lot of blog posts go with that massive um, masthead image at the top. So we're gonna try to set that up. To get that image in the top of the post, let's just click edit post and then beneath the post you should see some layout options so click header featured image options and just click enabled at the same time we can also change where that read more button goes so we wanted to have a full sentence and not cut people off mid sentence so i'm just going to put it right here with our cursor just drop your cursor right there and then just click on visual and now we just want to click on this little hamburger that says insert read more tag boom and update all right, I think we did it. We're just gonna go back to the home page and repeat that process of checking out our blog post. All right, so we have a no read more link. We're gonna have to look into that. 
but we can click on the featured image to get to the post or the title and beautiful now we actually have our masthead image followed by the blog post followed by the form and people can leave comments too all right i'm going to edit the post and see what happened to that read more link real quick just click text and we should be able to decide what words go in that little preview of the post on the home page also known as an excerpt if you click screen options you can choose excerpt and then close screen options and now you'll get this little excerpt box so you just want to copy whatever text you want to go on the home page as a preview of your post and put that in the excerpt box and paste perfect and now let's update and let's click to the home page and check out that post once again all right so now we have our post and we have our read more link which is perfectly after the sentence which is complete right there all right and read more and now it takes us to the beautiful post with a huge masthead image of our dog looking really cool great job next i want us to make a couple changes to our blog links and that would be up here right after our domain name we have this funny index.php and then the date and we don't want any of that we just want the words also known as keywords so that your links look simple in the eyes of Google. Google friendly links. If we go to your home page, then the domain name looks okay. It's nice and simple, but if we go to the blog page, then we get all that funny stuff. So let's get rid of it. All it means is that the website is a folder and then within the website is an index.php folder and within that folder is a date folder and then your blog post is sitting in there and that's the folders you'd see if you looked in your file manager in control panel but we don't need to mess with that for now we just want to simplify it and it'll work the same so we can go back to the dashboard and then we can hover on settings and click permalinks and then what we do every time which is the best way is just to choose post name and I can't think of any reason why we would want to choose the other ones so post name is definitely the best and save changes. And now when we look at it, not only are our blog post links gonna be simple with just the keywords, but same with our pages. Great job. I also want us to add a www to our domain name because most sites just are like that. If you go to Twitter, it's short. Or if you go to like Facebook, it's long. Or if you go to like Apple, it's long meaning the long has the www so really I think the majority have the www Twitter was just not a great example like Google has www so I want to show you how to do that and I want to actually do that for us right now and then we can move on if you wanna you know if you want to remove it you can just remove it too but I'll show you how to do it so we can go to the dashboard and then let's go to settings click on settings and it's gonna take you to the general area in settings the top of it and now in WordPress address URL and site address URL, you just want to add a www to both of them so they look identical. These two links look identical. And if you don't want to do it, that's fine. Um, when someone types in www.wordpresssitefree.com, it'll just redirect to the short one. All right, but I think it's going to look a little more professional if we do it. So I'm going to add a www and a www right there they have to look exactly the same otherwise the site can go down I've never messed that up but I've heard of bad things happening so if you do change it make sure they look exactly the same so double check that you have both of these links looking exactly the same including the HTTP colon slash slash www dot all that and if you don't I've heard people say your site will go down I've never messed that up but just make sure they look exactly the same so we don't have to worry about that and then come down and click save changes all right, it's going to ask us to log in again, no problem. Now we can look at our site, and our homepage has that www. Great job. Next, it's time to add some social media to our homepage. We're going to put a Facebook like box in the sidebar over here, and we're going to get rid of the uh, default widgets at the same time. So to control your sidebars, we need to go to the dashboard, and then we need to hover on Appearance and click Widgets. A lot of the good stuff in WordPress is in appearance. Now in this area, we can either remove or we can move stuff. 
So we have our primary sidebar with all the stuff in it and our secondary sidebar with nothing in it. That's pretty cool. What I want to do is actually move the search bar to the secondary sidebar. So it's on the left and also move the archives. So there'll be a list of posts once you make them in the left. And then on the right, we're going to delete recent posts, delete comments because we don't have any yet. So what you do is you just open it with the drop down arrow and then click delete. And then you don't need to even save once you delete. The site will just automatically know that it's gone and update itself. All right, perfect. Now what I want us to do is just grab one of these text widgets, click to open it. We're going to select primary sidebar and then we're going to click add widget and you'll get a new widget right there and you can go ahead and write stuff in here. But what we want to do is put the Facebook like box in here. So how do we do that? Well, we have to go to the Facebook like box page. So I'm going to look up Facebook like box and we're going to click on the page plugin because it's actually called a page plugin is the one we want. It says the like box plugin is deprecated. So page plugin it is. And then this part's really easy. If you don't have a Facebook page yet, go ahead and create one for free. And if you do, then it's super easy. You just need to put your Facebook page URL in right here, put the name of it right after the facebook.com. And then you can change some variables like the width. We can make it like, I don't even know if that works, but we can try to make it wider or smaller. See that works. It's pretty cool. Um, you can choose the header, make it simplified. But I think the default settings are really good, especially with those friends faces. So we're just going to use it as is and keep the timeline on it. And we're going to click get code. Next, what we need to do is just put this code in the widget, the bottom code. So click once, right click, copy. Back in widgets, click text because it's a piece of code. And then we can just paste it in and we can give it a title, join us on Facebook and save it. But it won't work quite yet. We have to do one more step. We have to go back to the page plugin page, click on the upper code to highlight it, right click, copy it, come back to WordPress. And now we're just gonna go on settings, hover on settings and click insert headers and footers. And that's the plugin we installed that will help us put in third party code when we need to put it in a different place than in a widget or in a page or a post, for example. In this case, it's good to go in the header. So right click, paste that second Facebook code up here. We don't really need to know what it does or what it means. Just put it in there and save it. And now let's look at your site. So when we click to the home page, scroll down, we have a beautiful Facebook like box in our sidebar. People can like us right from the, you know, inline sidebar and they don't even have to leave to like it. I thought I already liked myself. All right, let's continue getting social here and add some social media icons to your header. So a lot of people struggle to do this on normal WordPress themes or sites because they have to like float them on the right and create the icon and then create the link and everything's all like jumbled, but in the catch base theme, it's really simple. So let's go to customize. And then we're going to go to social links, duh, and click social links. And now we just got to go ahead and populate it. So we're going to go to Facebook. I'm actually going to go to my Facebook page so you don't see my newsfeed. All right. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Just, you know, you never know what people are posting on there. And then we're going to do Facebook link and we're going to go to Twitter slash me. So this is a little bit cumbersome, but you know, you just got to go find your links and put them in here. And at least that's all the work we have to do. And we can Google plus ourselves. You should have one of those, even though it's kind of quiet on there. Sometimes you just want to have that because it helps with search rankings and authority. All right, paste it in. That's really good. And then YouTube, of course, we have. YouTube.com slash Naraya. All right, just a nickname from one of my old besties. Check out on your blog. Okay, don't want to hear from that guy. And just paste it in. And the links will come in right when you set them up. And the thing that I love the most is that they inherit the color of the site. 
so many social icons on credible sites just go gray when you highlight them and like how boring is that you want to actually have that rich color that google plus or youtube spends so much time picking out or that twitter blue come on guys like give us that color all right and lastly we can do instagram not a huge grammar but getting there kind of like golf gram for me and publish and accept it should take us back to our home page and we now have our nice social icons but why are they floating low let's go change that let's go to customize social links social links why are they floating low let's go back all right, so here we are on the homepage, and I'm gonna show you a way to see why something is off on WordPress. Why is this thing floating down below? We want it just in line with the uh, header and the logo and all that, the site title and the logo and all that. So we can actually just right click, and this is the beauty of Google Chrome. They have this inspect tool. And so it's gonna highlight the header. And if this looks a little crazy, just bear with me. I can't tell you how many mysteries are solved using the right click inspect tool. So it shows us that here we are in the wrapper. That's what this area is called because we know that when we're uh, our mouse is on it, the wrapper is highlighted. Whereas if our mouse is on like the primary search enabled, it's going to be below that. It's going to be the nav menu. So you just have to kind of mouse around. So we're in the wrapper. So we want to be in on the right. The mystery can be solved. The wrapper has padding of 20 pixels and the padding is like pushing things out and in and around and that's why this is getting pushed down. And we know that because if we uncheck it and remove the padding temporarily, then our social media icons go where we want them. So to fix this, we don't want to change it here, we want to leave it checked, but we want to click the wrapper and just copy the whole part of it. So the whole word including the period, copy. All right, and then we want to go back to customize and click additional CSS all right and then just paste in what we just copied which is the wrapper make sure that period is in there now I'm going to show you how to write your second line of CSS code so you can be a coder and all that we're just gonna write padding zero so our theme had a setting that had padding zero 20 picks but we're overwriting that and making the padding zero we're basically just tweaking the theme a little bit to look how we want it to look all right, that was fun. Glad it worked. It's always nice when we write code and it works and we'll publish it. Perfect. Now, if you're finding that the text on top of your image slider doesn't show up clear enough because it's white on a light image, then you can apply this black background to the text at all times, uh, not just when you mouse over it. So to do that, we just got to go back to customize and we're going to click additional CSS and dive back into yet another CSS tutorial here and we're just going to write based on the research I did in our themes appearance editor file here in the background here I just did some research to save us time we're going to write this part feature slider entry container so I'm going to copy that and paste it in and what that just says is within the featured slider, this whole thing, the entry container is this thing. Now we're going to work on it. We're going to operate on it. So open bracket, and then we're just going to write background dash color hashtag zero 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 for black. And you can set it up like that so that there is always a black background on your text, and that way people can always read it. So it's pretty cool. You can also set it up so the text is a different color by just writing color then you can just write whatever color you want as long as you spell it right you just gotta make sure that it looks good so that it would definitely not fly but you know that's how you do that and you can also change the opacity of it if you want it to be a nice light gray you see that on websites sometimes they have that gray overlay you just make it some number in between 0 and 1 alright very cool so feel free to use that feature if you want and we're just going to publish it. All right, and exit. Of course, if you want to change the text on top of your sliders, that would be in the pages themselves. 
So we'll just follow the read more link, get to our about page, click edit page. Now we're going to go to the visual tab. We're going to make some space at the top and we're just going to write our own text so it doesn't pull in this basic uh, panipsum coffee text. And then let's use our insert read more tag, perfect, and update. Now when we go to the home page, that text will show up right here. So perfect, now you have control of that in the, the slider text blurb. Let's do the same to our contact page. Might help if we wrote a little bit more in there. So let's click it and let's write one more sentence so it looks nice and even. Very cool, good job. All right, so we're really getting into the techie stuff here. The tutorial's almost done, but I know some of you will want to, you know, really know how to edit every part of your website that you see. If you see it, you want to control it, you want to change it. So one part that uh, people definitely see and want to change is the copyright. And this is going to be one of the last things we do. I'm going to show you how to change the copyright. Uh, write whatever you want, you know, about your business, some joke, you know, some cute quote, whatever you want. We just don't want it to say catch base by catch themes and, you know, lay all of our cards on the table quite yet. So let's go to the dashboard. I'll show you where to find this. It's not easy. They made it harder in WordPress because some themes want you to pay to edit the footer. This one doesn't. They're really chill about editing the footer. But for some reason, they took it out of appearance customize. Um, might have been a rule in WordPress that you had to do that. But in any case, we're still going to find it. Instead of appearance customize, you got to go to appearance editor. All right, now you just got to click ink. And then we got to go to the uh, catch base core file.php. And once you're in this file, just hit command find. And you'll get the search bar, which is the easiest way to find the right section. And type in copyright and hit enter. And here we are in the copyright section. So before we make any changes, I just want you to give yourself a backup copy of this footer section. So what we want to do is hit Command or Control A to get the whole file and then Command or Control C to copy it. Open up our text editor, hit Command or Control New and paste in the entire file to create a backup of the footer. Core file backup. Alright, perfect. And save it. I just hit Command Save. And there we have it. So if we mess anything up and our site goes down, then we can just copy paste what we have here back into here. All right, you get the picture. Now to actually edit our footer, we want to focus on these two sections, the footer left content and the footer right content. So buried within this HTML code, this is all HTML by the way, there is some English. And as you look at it more and more, you'll start to figure out exactly what's going on here. It's really not that complicated. It's just a matter of a little bit of practice and trying to write it on your own instead of just copy pasting it sometimes and learning what the divs are and like I said if you have the opportunity to take a beginner HTML or CSS class definitely jump on it. It's not mandatory. We are using WordPress because WordPress allows us to do it without code but if you take one of those classes the amount of confidence it gives you when you come back to WordPress is truly tremendous. It's a huge amount of confidence and it's priceless because you actually know how everything works or at least more of it. Okay, so let's make these edits already. We just got to delete the stuff in between the alligator rackets. So this is the left stuff, which would be where it says copyright, blah, 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 all rights reserved. So what we're going to do is actually just copy part of it we want to use. All right, and we're going to paste that in there. I'm going to write Dear Blogger Inc. All right, that's my company. And then on the right, I'm just gonna delete that. And we're gonna write, learn how to make this website on YouTube. So how do we put a link in here? Well, we need to actually write out the HTML for a link, which is really easy. It's just open bracket a href equals quotation mark. All right, then you need a link itself. So I'm just gonna put the link to YouTube in here now because I don't have the video link yet, but then I'll put it in when we're done. So you just write out the link, then you do a close quote and a close alligator bracket, and then at the end of your anchor text, which is the text inside the link, you do a alligator bracket a, sorry, alligator bracket uh, forward slash a close alligator bracket. That's how you do it. If you mess up the link, then 
you know the link will apply to like way more text than you want or if you leave the a out then it's gonna totally link like everything perhaps so make sure you close off that link tag and now we just gotta update it all right so we didn't break the whole site and we go back to our site now and click refresh we don't have the footer change and I think that's just because the site is caching I'm gonna use my handy browser cache clear button way up here and refresh all right still nothing and I think we're just gonna give it a few moments and then our footer should update okay so we have waited a few moments and I think there's a good chance our footer will be updated now I'm just gonna hit command R here to refresh it and looks like everything is a little bit crazy because I left this window open well that's great what kind of website is that and it just took a second and now when we go down we see our own copyright that we put in here with our business name and then our link and that works hopefully so I think that's just a link to YouTube now alright so minor kinkage there I'm just gonna chalk that up to leaving this window open for too long that can happen in website world if you leave one of your tabs open you come back everything's like not loading and acting weird and very good our photo looks good so good job on that lastly here in our tutorial I want to show you how to set up Google Analytics in three steps so the first step is just to insert the Google Analytics tracking code on our website and we can do that by visiting analytics.google.com to start it's free to set up and amazing and once you're in analytics for the first time it should take you to a, an admin sort of screen so mine's gonna be you know different because I already have it I'm just gonna click on admin in that lower left corner and then we are gonna create an account all right we're gonna call this one WP site free WP site free and then we're gonna get our domain name copy that all right so again if you're just setting up analytics it might take you through a slightly different process because you're already on the admin screen right when you set it up but the steps should be similar. We have to choose the industry category. So we're just gonna grab internet and telecom. We're gonna come down and we're gonna choose get tracking ID. All right, so we'll just accept the terms. We'll come down and we'll accept the terms down here and we'll say I accept. And now it should deliver us our tracking ID code right there. Just click once in this screen to highlight and then right click copy. Now back in our site, come back to the dashboard. All right, and we're doing the work here that a plugin would do for us, um, but we're doing it without a plugin, so it's faster. And we're doing the work that a professional web designer would do for us because we're doing it ourselves. It's cheaper. So I want you to just hover on settings now and click on insert headers and footers. From that plugin that we installed way back, we get this nice scripts and header and scripts and footer area. And we just wanna put this code in the header. Now, it's up to you whether you put it below the Facebook code or above it, whatever helps you keep track of the code you most recently pasted in. And in my case, I actually like just doing it above. So I know that the newest piece of code I pasted in is at the top. All right, just leave some space in between them. One space is fine and save it. And now Google Analytics can start tracking data on your website, like visits, conversions, page views, all that good stuff. So the second step in installing Google Analytics, once you do that, is to add our site to Google Webmaster Tools. So if you just Google, add a website to Webmaster Tools, and hit enter, you'll get the right page. You're gonna go to this link that says add a website property. All right, and then you're gonna click on this search console link right here, and if you don't have this link, it should be somewhere in the middle of our screen, so either one will work. All right, and then you're gonna click add a property. You might need to log in or enter in your email and log in or something like that, but I've clearly already done that. So I'm just gonna do add a property and we're gonna paste in our domain name again. All right, and what this is doing is adding your site to Google's free search console. They'll tell you if things are wrong with your site, they'll help you index it and they'll help um, it to become crawled in the most optimized way by the search engine among other things all right so then it's gonna say website we are obviously a website not an Android app and add next it will ask you to verify ownership of your site 
And the easiest way is usually the recommended way, especially if it's Google Analytics, because we just did that. So all we need to do is just click verify because you've already put in the asynchronous tracking code in the head section of your page. And you must have edit permission of your analytics web property. We've accomplished all three of those things now. So let's click verify, see if it works. Sometimes it takes a little longer, but in this case it was super fast. So that's great. Now step two is done and we've added our site to Search Console. Even if you don't use Search Console, you still need to do this step because this just lets Google know that you own the site and that you have a site and it can, like I said before, crawl it in a more optimized and efficient way. And then the last step in adding your site to Google Analytics is just to submit your link to Google. So if you Google submit my URL to Google, you're going to get a third screen. Just come down to where it says submit URL, click on that link. And you might wonder why there's so many different ways to submit a website to Google. Well, and my best answer to you there is just that Google's been around for a long time. These submit to search engine tools have changed over time. And I personally like trying as many of them as I can just to make sure that Google notices my site and I'm not using one tool that's outdated and I'm missing another tool that's current. So it's the sort of thing where persistence is key and you just want to keep trying to get your site into Google. And one way to keep trying is just to keep using their different tools like this one. So we're going to click the submit a sitemap option here. And then we're going to click the submit it to Google using the search console sitemaps tool option. Now where it says search property, just click there and grab the site we just added. And it's time to add a new sitemap. All right, so on our website, we already have a sitemap. You might not know where it is, but it's there. And to find it, we're actually just gonna to click to the Yoast option. Click on that lowercase y. Then we're just gonna click Features at the top and make sure all these are turned on, by the way, every single one of them. And specifically for XML sitemaps, we're just gonna to wanna to click on the question mark and then click See the XML Sitemap. And this is the link to your XML sitemap, which we're gonna to submit to Google right now. All you need to do is just copy the part after the forward slash, just like so, and then come back to the Google screen we were on before and just paste that in. All right, very good. So that's the link to our sitemap as is defined by Yoast right here. We can see the nice different sitemap files that exist already. All right, so Yoast is working. And now we just need to go ahead and click Submit at Google Search Console. Success, very good, got it. And we're done for now submitting our site to Google Analytics. Again, submitting your URLs to Google is something you should do often. You should check out how your sitemap looks often and make sure Google is actually processing it. You can always remind them. It's something you wanna stay on top of for the best possible results and not something you wanna just set up and then leave alone for years on end and assume it will work because it might break down on you. The more you know, the more active you are in your Google Search Console in keeping your settings in check and keeping everything run perfectly, the better your site's gonna perform and the more traffic you'll hopefully get. The very last thing we wanna set up is just a site icon, also known as a fav icon. That's obviously very easy to do. I thought we'd just end on a super easy step now that we've done all those hard steps. And to do that, we can just click Customize. All right, and now we're gonna click Site Identity. Scroll down and where it says site icon, just select image. And we're gonna choose our leaf and select it. Skip. Actually, we have to crop the image there. It made us do it, whatever. And now publish it. And because it's so small, it's gonna look good because our file is larger. So now when people are on your blog or your website or whatever you've made here, people will know where they're at. It just takes one moment to update itself. Now, if they're browsing like all sorts of tabs, like YouTube and Google and Facebook and all that sort of stuff, then over here, they're gonna see your site icon if it ever updates. All right, guys, so our fave icon leaf has finally decided to show up in the browser tab. But if your fave icon doesn't show up, you can always do it the manual way. Just visit this creating a fave icon page. It's one of my favorite at the codex. And it's one of the only ones that works at the codex. Just kidding, Codex. A lot of it works, it's just kind of hard to get through. And so what you need to do is just click on this link down here that's nicely highlighted and copy it. 
So it's going to be step five down here in installing a favicon in WordPress section. You're going to come back to your site, go back to the dashboard, and hover on settings and click enter headers and footers again. And we're going to drop that one little line right at the top of our scripts and header. All right, so as you go through WordPress, a lot of times it's going to say paste something below the following head tag in the HTML. You can put code under the head tag by going to appearance editor and finding your header.php file, but it's easier to just paste it in here instead. So once you paste it in that one link, all you have to do is replace what's in the quotation marks here with the link to our fav icon. We can delete that and then we can just go to the dashboard, click media where all of our images are, grab our fav icon, Double click the URL over here on the right and copy it. And then just drop that sucker in in between the quotation marks and save it. And that's the old fashioned way to install a fave icon in WordPress. And now that little icon will definitely show up. All right guys, I'm super sad that that was the last step for our tutorial today. You now know how to make a WordPress website for free. Hope you enjoyed it because I really enjoyed making this for you. That was a ton of fun and I will definitely stick around in the YouTube comments below for any questions you have. Please make sure to say hi down below and definitely ask a question. Just put it in there if you have a question right now and I'll get back to you as soon as possible or maybe someone else will. I can't say it enough, please, please, please post your questions and thoughts below and please answer other people if you can or if you've seen their problem before. All right, guys and gals, so as promised, I'm gonna take you now to our showcase where you can get your blog or website featured, get an image, get your story up, get some traffic going. And to get that all done, you just have to go to showcase.dearblogger.org. That is a hidden subdomain of Dear Blogger. And you're gonna see something like this. So we made it, yes we did. All these sites are currently up on the showcase, so it's not a ton, but it's just a start. We haven't done a ton of these yet, but I hope to feature more and more of you guys. And for example, we can check out the Globetrotting Couples. So you'd get an image to your site and you get a description and we need the Globetrotting Couples to stop Globetrotting for a few minutes so they can fill this in. But then you're gonna get the link to your site and how many times this has been viewed the category, blah, 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 all that. And you can even put a link in the description here if you want, we're not too strict about that. Or you could put your whole story, just a little story, some quotes, whatever you want. And then when someone clicks launch project, it'll go to the beautiful blog that you made. For example, really like what the Globe Trotting Couple has done. You should check it out. So big thanks to Kevin and Stephanie for being one of the first people to be on our showcase. And I hope everyone can learn from what they've made beautiful blog. Thank you, Kevin and Stephanie, and you can do it too. So see you guys at the showcase link. Once you're here, just click submit your website in the upper right. Give it a title, give it a category. Da, 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 da. Tell us what theme you built it with. So that could be one of the ones from our videos, or it could be a different one. Tell us what you want to say about your site and post content. Give us a thumbnail, which is just the image from your site or any image you want to represent your brand the link to your domain name, any additional info, you can leave that blank if you want, and you can put up more images if you'd like, and then click submit your work. And someone from our team will put your website up on our YouTube showcase. The only criteria is that you make part of it or all of it, but it doesn't have to be all of it. It could just be part of it with our tutorials. Okay guys, so I'll see you here and can't wait to give you some featured loving on WordPress. Again, thanks so much for watching because I really enjoyed making this for you. Check out the demo site at WP Site Free. Keep it real on WordPress. Always make the web a better place. And uh, yeah, that's all we got, guys. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. You can click here to submit your new website or blog to our showcase, or you can click down here to create an email subscription form like we saw in the video. 
You can also subscribe to get our latest advice and free WordPress help. And last but not least, please make sure to smash the thumbs up button and post a comment so we can hear from you. Cheers.